the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. And when he sl then he laid his hands on her. Immediately she stood up straight and began praising the Lord. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, but not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger? and lead it away to give it water. And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on this Sabbath day? When he said this, all of his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Please, please be seated. Grace and peace to you from Creator God the Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, brought to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Set my people free. Uh, free my people, set my people free. If, as I was thinking about this lesson and, and Isaiah as well, uh, it, it's really true that throughout gospel, throughout uh, scripture, we see God in relationship with humankind working through pro prophets to challenge the people wherever they may be to care for one another. And not only to challenge the people to care for one another, particularly those who are oppressed, who are poor, who are hungry, uh, but to recognize that if they worship God and do not care for the poor, if they worship God, and do not try to liberate the oppressed, God spits the worship out. It's meaningless. It's almost like you're trying to pull one over on me. And we see this anger and this tension throughout all of scripture. And, and this, this energy that is coming from God is what we, I like to call the great shalom, the living waters of justice, mercy, peace, and forgiveness. And, and it's kind of like a stream. And a stream is pretty narrow. You know, the earth is big. But this energy and this force and this reality is, is, it's a narrow stream. And do we have the courage to dive in it or not? You know, uh, throughout scripture, this is the way, you look at Moses uh, speaking out against Pharaoh, saying, set my people free. What's going on here is thoroughly unreasonable. You, this is not, no one should live to satisfy all of your needs. There's more to life. And these people are working their fingers to the bone. We see prophets that follow Moses, one right after another, whether we look at Amos, whether we look at Hosea, 
where we look at Jeremiah, Ezekiel, uh, Habakkuk. I mean, they're all riffing on the same thing, the same theme. How? How? How can you worship God and allow oppression to go down? How do you do that? How does that work? I, uh, this week, I, I, uh, I thought about, um, I, I thought about slavery as I, I'm thinking about pain and suffering. So I, what I did is I, I, uh, I googled, you know, slave, modern slavery, right? And I came up with uh, an article on Wikipedia about modern slavery. And so what I tend to do when I, when I want to learn something, I first go all, all the way down to all the references. And there were 87 references on this article, see? And so I, I didn't read all of the reference, but I kind of did an audit. I, I picked like six of them. And I tried to, just to try to get my arms around the data a little bit. But a, a, a the, the, way, the, the way modern slavery is defined is it's a person who is working for nothing against their own volition. They are owned somehow, uh, by another. And their life is they work for nothing and uh, they're against their own will. And what I learned was uh, there, there are 40 million slaves on earth today. 40 million people around the world that would be classified as slaves. And uh, Interestingly enough, 400,000 of them reside in the United States. So there are 400,000 slaves in, uh, in the United States. Now, I say that uh, because I was inspired by the prophets, and, and we'll talk about Jesus in a minute, and, and, and see what was going on here, folks is the prophets were speaking out against things they could see. They, they saw the injustice around them. They were living with it. They were into it. Their culture was permeated by this. They, they couldn't escape it. And so they spoke into it. Jesus saw uh, pain and suffering one Sabbath day as he was preaching or teaching in the tabernacle, as Luke says. And he sees this woman who was suffering greatly uh, for many, many years. And uh, as much as it was his commission to teach that day, his compassion drove him to be with her and to touch her and to heal her. And of course, she's all excited. She's happy, right? I'm, gosh, oh my gosh, I'm set free. And uh, of course, just like the prophets of old, Jesus is immediately confronted by someone, a leader in the tabernacle, who says, hey, you're, this is the Sabbath day. We're not supposed to do this. And once again, Jesus is confronted by this hypocrisy, see? We want to worship this loving God, but yet we won't extend it to us. Even someone suffering in our midst for 18 years. Jesus saw it, and he did something about it. I'm pretty confident that Jesus, Son of God, 
was inspired by all of these prophets that preceded him. They were really pretty much doing the same job. They saw something, they spoke out against it. So it leaves us to say, well, how does this work here in North America for us? Certainly, there's no question in my mind, if someone came into our midst suffering, into our physical midst, it would be our reaction to, to try to help. Because we can see it, and it's real, and we get that. No matter what day, we would do that. But my, my guess is, and I think back to a few weeks ago where Jesus said, to those who are given much, much is expected. In God's economy, we in North America, most of us, not all, there's one, 400,000 slaves, and plus many others that are deeply oppressed and so on, but we live in a very privileged uh, reality when we compare ourselves to the rest of the world. And it's hard for us to even understand it unless we see it and we smell it, we breathe it and we hear it. We can block it all out. And therefore, there's a darkness in God's eyes that comes between us and creation as endowed as we might be. So the challenge we have today, I believe, is to, and, and we live in a society that likes to celebrate winners and ignore losers. Uh, you know, the glamorous and this and that. We, we tend to, yay, yay. Uh, we get all excited about athletes or actors or whatever this is going on. And so we tend to try to gravitate this way. But as people of God, and it's good to enjoy and celebrate, to be sure. I'm not even questioning it. But we have to become more intentional about learning about pain and suffering on planet Earth. And the thing is, we have the capability to do it. Just like I jumped on Wikipedia to learn a little more about slavery and, and the dimensions of it, see. We all have the power and the capability to imagine and to follow a story up and to learn about our brothers and sisters throughout the world. And that's the first step of a prophet, to see it. And once we see it, we ask ourselves the question, what am I to do about it? Now, in some cases, we're not going to be able to do anything about it. Maybe we'll pray. Maybe we'll pray for people in certain situations. In other cases, as the Spirit works on us, we may want to take the next step and the next step. But if we insulate ourselves and don't recognize the vast power we have, we lose that opportunity to share God's love with the world. We can't do everything. That's not the point. But the more we know, our spirit softens and it moves in ways that are more consistent with shalom. And we take these shots. But we have to become intentional. And so in the modern world, we turn to our computers. We have to be careful what we hear on TV. Everybody's selling, whether it's Fox News or MSNBC or CNN. There are bi there's biases. It's not all bad, but it's not going to give us a whole story. But we have to look into things, learn, place it with some of our time, and make a decision. So I, I, uh, I invite you to do that. I, uh, to, to start to see and then to pray and then to ask God, what is it that you would want me to do?
Amen.